it's good. Was it worth the eye? I don't think so. Hi Rivers all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Eliza, I created the Press Women's Bookworm and on this channel I'm fighting depression and patriarchy with dealing for a book. And today I'll be reviewing On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Wang. So first of all I want to start with the trigger warning, with lots of trigger warnings, but I think it's not that heavy because it's not like going deep into those topics and it's not like graphic except the sex scenes are really graphic i will put that out but yeah as far as trigger running goes there is uh, homophobia there is physical abuse there is drug addiction there is mental illness ptsd and that's all i can think on the top of my Ad. Hopefully there is no not more. But yeah, okay. No, that's out of the way. On our free briefly gorgeous talks about Little Dog, who is Asian American, was born in Vietnam and then was raised in America, and the relationship with his mother. So throughout all the book, Little Dog is writing a letter to his mother who cannot read. And you might ask like why would he write a letter? for his mom if she cannot read. Um, and Ocean Wang in an interview explained that he wanted a format that allowed him to go to the essayistic detour and to have like multiple formats in the book and also to be able to add and add and add and you know and I think this is why he's fixed on this idea of the coma in the book and I think literature student and people who are more into writing might relate um, and he wanted like a lack of cohesion and he succeeded in this um, but yeah this is why he chose the, the letter format and some people were like why didn't he just make a diary which is kind of you know would have allowed to do the same thing and would have made more sense and also if it's really a letter for your mom why do you include so many graphic sex scenes in it um, because yes his mom will probably never read it as she cannot read but it felt like throughout all the book he did want his mom one day to read it so kind of weird thing and uh, Ocean Vang added that you know with the letter then it it all fall on the language and was the language enough, was the sentence enough to to carry us on and to speak about life and death and this is why he chose to, to do this letter kind of book. But I think he really did a little bit too much on the language, which was his goal, which was his intention, but it kind of ruined the book for me. So sure, like if you have read or heard any review about this book you will know that the language is exquisite in this book it's really really stunning and Ocean Vong is a poet uh, first and foremost and you can tell in the book and it uh, really has this poetry feeling which is fine for a while but you come at a point where you're like yeah okay what's next it's like yeah, it's it's beautiful. What, what's next? Like, okay, and nothing, <laughs> nothing came, really, um, and it was quite disappointing. So yeah, the language was magnificent, so much so that I underlined some sentences, and I think lots of people had the same feeling where you had to read it once just to admire the beauty of it, and then read it twice just to analyze what was happening like what feelings it caused in your in your body and your soul and to do that is exceptional but it was just here and there it was not like throughout all the book because as I said like at some point you just get tired of it you're just like okay I got it you know to write you know to make stunning sentences but is there more than that because relying on beauty for 200 pages is not enough and yes the author does uh, reflect and puts a lot of super important theme 
in his book, but because of the importance that is given to the language and to the structure of the sentence and to make everything beautiful and fall in place, it didn't take those subjects far enough for me and it was all surface level. Uh, but still they are super important and they invite to reflections and I kind of like that. But I was reading fiction and I wanted escapism and I had everything but escapism. Um, this book felt so real and I think many people said that they would have enjoyed it better if this book was a memoir because so much of Fong's life is in this book and he was asked on Seth Meyers if you know how much of it was true because his mom cannot read, is also Asian American born in Vietnam and uh, I saw in another interview that he was also affected by friends who had drug addiction and who died and this is also in the book and he said that he wanted to start with the truth and end with art and I think again that's kind of where he succeeded to do that but where the book felt short because it was so much relying on are going to be exceptional in the writing and it's, it's tiring when you read a fiction you know and I am able to put up with that if it's, it's a non-fiction and um, you know I came here to learn more about the life of that person or you know, and I think, anyway, if he was writing a memoir, he wouldn't have written it that way, but we will have got the same message and we will have got a better message because he could have gone so much further with all those themes. And I know that he said, like, he wanted a mix of lots of things and he wanted, like, that kind of essay kind of genre, but he tried to make it a novel and it's just... <laughs> so weird. Yeah. You go into this book feeling like, oh, it's just 200 pages, it's a short book, like, I could read it in one sitting. And you end up not being able to read it in one sitting because it's just too much and too heavy. Not the content in it, but uh, the structure, the format, the structure of the sentences. It's a lot to take in. And I think he constructed this like a poetry collection. But the thing is, when you have a poetry collection, you can just read some poems, then leave it there, then come back to it later. But people don't read novel like this. People want to read novel in one sitting or in two to three sittings, sometimes more, you know, if you're a slow reader. But you kind of like read it in big chunks, generally. Uh, it was heavy for me, like mentally. It was mentally exhausting to read this book. It was really, really slow. And it's due to two facts, the writing, like I said, but also there is no plot whatsoever. You kind of realize that there is no plot at some point. And as I said, I'm not someone who likes character-driven story. And even more in this, the writing again made me feel enabled to connect with the main character. And that is even if there were so much things that I could relate to and I think it's pretty universal because I think many people will relate to one topic or one other and maybe that's why it's so appealing to so many people. That was those sentences that are so breathtaking and make you stop and make you go like wow. But, but it was just not not enough for me. Okay, now let's talk about the themes of the book, which are, I think, the most interesting part of the book. And, uh, you know, each one would deserve its own video because there's like so much to talk about and so much to unpack, but I'll just like <laughs> shorten it and then you can have your own reflection about it um, later on. So the first theme that, of course, uh, is appealing to me the most is oh PTSD and generational trauma was talked about. Um, you can see through the, the book there is three generation, his grandmother, his mother and him. And you can see oh the grandmother trauma affected the mother trauma and then oh the mother trauma affected little dog. And oh you know this family is kind of toxic but also at the same time there was like lots of love and also I like to mention that you know in immigrant family love is done through services and it's not always done through saying I love you for example even though love is there so yeah the, this conversation and seeing oh trauma is passed on from generation to generation was really interesting. Related to that there is the immigrant experience and what it is to come from another country and never feel American enough. And it's definitely something I can relate, not in the 
immigrant experience level. I was never an immigrant, but even though many people told me to go back to my country, <laughs> but uh, in the fact that I'm mixed and I never felt white or black enough, and I never felt white, but some people in the black community call me white, and I'm like, I'm not white, and then white people consider me black and just mess up your identity. So I could relate in that sense that you never feel like you're quite belonging somewhere. And I like the fact that there was like the two side of colorism of little dog wanted to, and his family wanted him to be more white and to be like included and feel like he belongs. And then also his mother Rose passing for white but not having the language, not having English, proper English, and so she's not really passing. But also there was like this story of her being harassed by other Vietnamese kids because she was white and they wanted to her to be more Asian. You know, and I, I like I like that because it's, it's the other side of colorism that lots of people don't talk about. And yes, our light skin does allow us to have some privileges that dark skins don't have. Uh, and I aware of this, but also it's kind of not nice to be rejected by your own community because they felt like you're not black enough or Asian enough or Mexican enough. So I was happy to see that there. And of course racism against Asian people was a huge theme and the vlog talked about this law which was passed in Texas and that was designed to forbidden murder against any humans and humans being described as african-american white or mexicans and asian people not being recognized and he says that sometimes you are erased before you even get the chance to state who you are and i think this um, echoes the sentiment of Asian Pacific American and Icelander were vocal after the Atlanta shooting that happened recently against uh, eight Asian women that were murdered and you know that they were not being seen and taken into account like even in the IPOC words you know we use BIPOC to see all the people of color but they don't even have like their own layer and often like disregarded and um, something I think I'm was and I don't have like a better word for now and also it opened my mind to the idea that for me Asian people were never targeted uh, of racism because for me like most of the people I see I consider them white and it comes from my own racism you know and the fact that for me and for many people in the western world I think people from Asia is only people from East Asia like China, Japan and we never consider that Asia is actually so big and there are people from different countries and different colors and we are so underrepresented and so not seen um and so this book highlighted that and you know it's already something because of what happened recently that i was thinking about but no even more and it just converted me to my own racism and being like oh yeah, like actually a white person could be Asian, but also a black person could be Asian. And it's just like something that we have to keep in mind and we have to make an effort to, you know, represent them and, and then their voices. Then of course there is all the exploration about being gay and what does it mean and oh, you navigate to all that where you were a teenager and uh, Ocean Vuong, which by the way, I could listen all these like so eloquent, so articulated. Everything that he says is like quotable. <laughs> um, and he said that that gay people or LGBTQIA plus people don't get the bird and beast conversation, or they get it, but they cannot relate to it. And so they have to fail into pleasure. And through this failure, they are learning. And I thought it was so beautiful and so true because they don't have models, they don't have, you know, and everything they learn also they learn through porn and it says in the book like, oh, I just imitated what I saw in porn and then you realize like, oh, like it's not like in porn, like you have to make something, something else of it and you have to discover and you have to fail. And I think, yes, it's so relatable for LGBTQI plus people because they don't have Reference, they have like less references than heterosexual people, but I think it's also a valid argument for heterosexual 
people and so many people in general don't know that sex doesn't have to be like porn and that sex should be pleasurable and I mean pleasurable and if penetration is not for you don't do it and it's okay and take breaks to laugh to drink to put some lube it's okay and that's things that are never shown into porn and it's things that you have to learn and so many of us need to fail at it to learn how to do it better i talked about the reeling read from wrong to put that message across um and also there is this discussion about toxic masculinity because the the man that is with little dog is kind of struggling with um accepting who he is and again true sex is like you see toxic masculinity come through and oh you deal with that and what is it like uh, and it's make you reflect on, on this society and how they educate you to be when you are a man or when you are a woman and how they just like put in little boxes and you can't get out and again it was uh, associated to porn I think in the book where a little dog is says like oh I thought when we were between us you know the rules didn't apply that we could do what we wanted but I was wrong um, the rules were already in us you know put in us and I think it's so true for so many people with this relationship the element that was missing for me was seeing what was the consequences of being in a biracial relationship what are the difficulties of being in a biracial relationship which I think I could relate so much uh, to and yeah I kind of um, wish to see that but hey it's okay and last but not least there is drug stocks and he talks about drug addiction and overdoses and the uh, opioids crisis which is like a huge problem in the United States right now um, and it's clearly against it I think that's all the teams I could uh, think of and yeah of course there was the, the Vietnam War also which was related to the trauma obviously <laughs> And uh, yeah, and there's also the story of Tiger Wood, who is Vietnamese, apparently. Oh, Vietnamese, apparently. So, if something that you're interested in, like, go read the book. Um, but yeah, it's all the, the, the themes I can think of. Anyway, that's it for me. So, all in all, this book is not bad. Not, it's not bad at all. But it was so overhyped, and people really, really liked it. And I can see why but it's just I needed more. It's good. Was it worth the hype? I don't think so. I don't think it was like something exceptional about it and I think the, the exceptional thing here is the writing but again it's 450 pages you're just like wow wow that's so beautiful but then then you're like okay like is there something else beyond being beautiful and yes there were those themes that are talked about but they were not taken as far as they could yeah but it's, it's not like I eat it it's still a good book and probably should still pick it up like if anything I said same great to you then pick up this book you know but it's not going to be a reread for me and just pass it on to my partner because I think he will really like it um, and then I probably will separate myself from this book so yeah <laughs> the, it was not for me, it was not for me, um, but I'm happy I read it, I know what it talks about and I can have an opinion and be a bitch about it. <laughs> no. So that's it for me. If you read the book and like it, comment. If you read the book and didn't like it, comment and let's chat away. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.